Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Francisco, a specialist nephrologist and transplant immunologist working at Francisco Kidney Medical Center in Singapore. Welcome to the Kidney Health and Disease video series. Today is the time for the seventh video of the series that it is replacing kidney function through hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. We're going to talk about hemodialysis, also called blood dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, also called water or tummy dialysis, and we're going to discuss some of the pros and cons of these two therapies. Let's talk about in center hemodialysis. This is a depiction of how the hemodialysis process goes on. The patient has got a vascular access where a needle is inserted to take sufficient amount of blood from the body to pass it through the dialyzer where the cleaning process occurs. The clean blood returns to the body through a different needle and the excess of toxins flow into a special fluid called dialysate to eventually go into the drain. You can compare both the dialysate and the kidney. Remember, the dirty blood goes through the uh, renal artery into the kidney. The blood gets clean. The clean blood returns to the body through the renal vein and the toxins flow in the urine, similar to what the dialyzer does. But if you want to know a little bit more how the dialyzer actually works, the dialyzer is a filter with pores or holes where the excess of toxins can flow from the blood into the dialysis and be eliminated. But also the excess of water in the blood can be filtered through these pores and eliminated. This is how it looks in real life. There is an arterial or red port where the blood is taken from the body of the patient and is passed through the dialyzer where the cleaning occurs and the clean blood is returned to the body through the blue or venous port. Let's talk about the different types of vascular access. The most commonly used is the arteriovenous fistula or AVF. It is the artificial connection of two natural blood channels, one called an artery and one called a vein. The artery is a high pressure channel, the vein is a low pressure channel. When you connect them together, the pressure from the artery gets transmitted into the vein, the vein starts growing, the wall starts getting thicker, there is an increment in the blood flow into the vein, so now when you insert the needle, sufficient amount of blood can be taken to be cleaned in the dialyzer. It is the preferred access because it's the connection of two natural blood channels, so it's less prone to infections and less prone to blockage compared to the next type of access that is called the arteriovenous graft. Occasionally, the direct connection between the artery and the vein cannot be performed and a graft needs to be inserted to connect those channels together. This graph is a plastic graph. The needles are inserted directly, but it's more prone to complications because you will have a foreign body inside your arm, more prone to infections and more prone to blockage. There is a third type of vascular access called permcath or tunnel dialysis line. It's a plastic line that pierces the skin, gets buried under the skin in a tunnel, but eventually goes to the entrance of your heart to be able to take enough blood and be able to clean that blood in the dialysis machine. But it pierces your skin, so it's more prone to infections. The infections can be transmitted to the heart and spread to the rest of the body, making the patient very ill and endangering his or her life. In addition, if the catheter remains for long periods on those veins, the veins get irritated and get narrow. So the survival of current fistulas or the creation of new fistulas can be compromised. So that's why it's ideal not to use these therapies when there is time to prepare for a arteriovenous fistula or a graft. But occasionally, they are good bridges to start the patient on hemodialysis when the patient is caught by surprise with this disease. Maybe the disease was detected on, on a screening test, or the patient have to go through the process of difficult acceptance of this disease 
and delayed the creation of the fistula. But given the complications, as soon as the patient can create the fistula, it will be ideal. So let's talk a little bit about home-based peritoneal dialysis. In this therapy, a tube, a plastic tube is inserted into the tummy, special water or dialysis is drained into the tummy that rinses or bathes the blood vessels in the tummy. The toxins flow into the dialysis and gets drained. More specifically, zooming in, you will have the the tube to insert the uh, inserted in in the tummy that going directly into the abdominal cavity. The dialysis is drained inside. The excess of toxins in the blood channels of the gut, for example, can be drained into the dialysis, and the excess of water is drained into the dialysis by the content of sugar in the dialysis. The dialysis contains a lot of sugar because the sugar works as a sponge draining water from the blood vessels and eventually uh, the excess of water and toxins gets drained. However, this excess of water also gives a lot of complications, metabolic complications to patients. This is the manual or called CIPD. The patient manually inserts the water into the tummy let it be there for a few hours and eventually drains the dirty water of dialysis and the process repeats again. There is another type called APD where the patient can be sleeping at night and a, a machine automatically put the water inside the tummy and drain it and do it again and again for several times during the night. So when the patient wake up, disconnects from the machine and can continue his activities as normal. This is how it looks in real life. Patients will have a tube hanging on the tummy. And people talk about the freedom that peritonitis can give you. This is an extreme case. This patient is very famous on the web. Imagine him cruising the seas and being able to do his dialysis and do whatever he enjoys of life that he's cruising. So for Let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis. It is not an easy decision to choose one or the other, and this decision is in many occasions for the rest of the lives of the patients. So in occasions there are contraindications or, or um, medical problems that can preclude patients to choose one or the other, but only in occasions. Most patients can choose depending on many factors that we'll discuss in a minute. Some doctors commend that peritoneal dialysis seems to be more advantageous in survival in the first two years, but later both therapies are equally good. So although that is important for the consideration, there are many more factors that I want to discuss with you. Both therapies are actually equally good to clean the blood, but some people talk that peritoneal dialysis gives you independence because you can do it at home by yourself. But for other people, the fact of hemodialysis being done only three times a week, that means independence because they have four days a week that they don't need to do the therapy. Similarly, dependence can mean for some people doing it at home every single day for peritoneal dialysis. Or the fact that they need to do it hemodialysis three times a week on and on every single week of their life and plan all the schedules around that, that means dependence for other people. So also depends greatly on how your lifestyle and personality is. Some people will feel more confident by choosing hemodialysis because it's done by nurses, professionals. Other people will feel more confident doing by themselves. The Hemodialysis have something called peer effect. People go to dialysis centers, there's other people around suffering the same struggles that these patients are. So they can socialize and, and relate better to people suffering the same. Peritoneal dialysis give you the family life effect 
because you are at home so you can take care of chores or children or any duty at home while you are doing your dialysis you cannot do that when you go through hemodialysis both are prone to complications both are prone to infections or blockage but they have some complications specific of each therapy for example hemodialysis hypotension or messy blood pressure is common the development of hernias or weight gain because of the sugar load in the dialysis are common for parenteral dialysis plus others that you need to discuss with your doctor um, diabetes is less um, um, affected by hemodialysis but um, still there will be some fluctuations because during the dialysis days the patient has different schedules of eating or sometimes there might be changes with the dialysis use in the hemodialysis process. Peritoneal dialysis, on the contrary, can worsen dial uh, diabetes because the dialysis contains a lot of water, uh, a lot of sugar. So typically, hemodialysis is more long lasting than uh, the peritoneal dialysis because eventually the, the membrane in your body, in your body, the peritoneal membrane that is the, fil the natural filter, start getting thickened because of the load of sugar. And, if it, and also you have a lot of infections during the period of peritoneal dialysis, the, the membrane can be even thicker and thicker and eventually fails. There is no need for any home arrangement when you do hemodialysis, but you might need some space for a machine and storage of fluids if you choose peritoneal dialysis. Your work life uh, or student life will be more permissive if you choose peritoneal dialysis because you do the night version, the APD, while uh, that is less permissive with hemodialysis. You will need to have a flexible employer or boss or you need to choose work part-time because you need to take several hours on those days uh, of you receive the dialysis off. For sports, hemodialysis might be more permissive because definitely swimming or contact sports are off with peritoneal dialysis. You don't want to have the risk of the tube getting pulled. You can travel with either, but to travel with um, hemodialysis, you need to arrange for a trustable dialysis center in the country you are traveling to to prevent risk of catching an infection. Um, the suppliers of peritoneal dialysis fluids can deliver that to your hotel or, or foreign address. So you just need to do it manually. Both can affect your aesthetics. Um, you can have some art bombs that you can cover with long sleeves, or you can uh, have this tube in the tummy that you can cover with clothes, or you can use bikini, or you can just use a full um, bathing suit. But you need to cover it when you take shower. Fluid restriction, diet restriction are important in either type of uh, dialysis, but uh, the restrictions are more stringent for hemodialysis because of the intermittent nature. You only clean the blood three times a week compared to peritoneal dialysis that although it's smoother, it is 24 seven. Transport not needed definitely for peritoneal dialysis because you do it at home, but you will need to arrange some, some transport or take the time for commuting if you go for hemodialysis. You ne need some dexterity to do the connections, uh, a good vision to do the connections of the tubings if you choose for peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis is cheaper for both the patient and the economy uh, of the government than hemodialysis, but many patients might have some subsidies that can make one other therapy uh, or some insurance that can make one other therapy cheaper for, for themselves. But overall, the cost of this therapy is higher for hemodialysis. Some last important notes are that it doesn't matter what therapy you choose. And also you don't need to start dialysis fast only when your doctor uh, has advised you. But what is important is the timely planning of your vascular access or the insertion of your peritoneal catheter. 
to avoid these bridging uh, vascular access that are more bound to complications, and to to avoid um, the toxins continuously, you know, cause you other complications. But it's not only important uh, to plan for the session of access that be ready physically to go through the dialysis process, but to start preparing mentally to the new changes in your life that will occur after developing kidney failure and starting dialysis. It is not simple, but we will be there with you to, to help you go through this process, but you need to try to plan together with your doctor on time to avoid complications. So you can choose the therapy that fits better your work or student life, your social life, and your personality. Obviously, as I mentioned, when there is no contraindication for any or other therapy. This is very important because you're going to live for many years or maybe for the rest of your life with this therapy. You are never going to be happy with any type of dialysis, but at least you need to be content that you choose, you have chosen the best therapy that suits your lifestyle and your personality. So like you can carry on with the process and then later start enjoying life as you should and try to live as normal as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give us thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for the next video. The next one is also on the topic of replacing kidney function through a kidney transplant. So thank you very much. Cheers.